And this is another episode of Beyond the Surface Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Wanda J. Evans Brewer, and I'm seated at the beach. What's the name of this beach, Isaac? It's called La Loi Beach. La Loi Beach Ghana. in Pone, Ghana. I never say Pone the way they say Pone, but that's where I'm seated. I'm spending uh, my last few days. I'm set to, to, to leave here. Today is February 27th. I'm set, set to exit March 4th. And um, yes, with resistance, but nonetheless, I'm spending my last few days having some moments, enjoying this time with my husband. And we're just reflecting on some of the stuff that we've learned since I've been here. And just the other day, we uh, launched, we expanded our Wonderland juice juicing business to include water. And we um, set up a tank in L- Lalonia Village. Uh, and I was just asking him what was his thoughts about that experience. Isaac, t- tell my listeners what you think about us expanding Wonderland Juice to to water. Why is that a good move? Well, it's a very, very good move because you know, as we say, water is life. Everywhere is. we need water. You know, and one, uh, Wonderland entering the water business is a very, very good move. You see. Uh, for instance, we've been to Lolonia, that is my village where I come from, and we saw how they were struggling uh, for water for some months now. You know, so Wonderland thinking about uh, coming up with uh, uh, water tanks in the Lolonia village is, is a very, very good move that's going to um, alleviate some of the issues they have with water or shortages over there. It's a lot of water shortages in general in the country. And what you need to know is I got here in October. And since I've been here from October to February, it has rained one time. There was only one day that I was in Ghana and it actually rained. And the day it rained, it was a good rain. There definitely was rain. But that's a lot of, it's a lot of sun. I ha- haven't had a day that was lower than about, um, I want to say about 82 degrees. Ghana is very, very, very hot. And the most water I've ever drank in my entire life is being here. But I had to buy it. Everything is buying water. Water is being sold to wash yourself, to, to, to replenish yourself, for, um, for everything, for irrigation, for everything. You, you end up at some point flushing toilets, getting buckets of water, fetching water to take a bath with. Um, this tank, what is it going to do to that community? What value does it have to that community in Lulonia? That one tank, 5,000 liters. Yep. yep. Well, this water tank is going to store at least 5,000 liters of water that uh, will come into the, the tank when the tap is open. A lot of times, they don't have enough space to store their water. So when um, water is opened, they don't have, they have no space or they have no tanks to store them. So this water tank at least is going to store 5,000 liters of water that will, uh, will be open through the taps for them to use. So they won't have to go to those ponds? They don't have to travel, walk the, those far distance to the ponds to fetch those dirty waters that they have been fetching. And they were dirty. Very they were cloudy. very, very yeah. dirty. You don't you know. drink the clouded water. You pretty much use it to wash clothes and things like that. Yeah. Um, but I imagine in desperation, there have been occasions where people did drink it. Well, some uh, a guy told me that, you know, the old women, some of them drink it. Some of them drink it to say, you know, they use it to cook. You know, they put it on fire. And I th- I'm sure everything that uh, will, you know cause any harm to them yeah sterilized. yeah that is it but he told me they drink this water and i was very very shocked well i have i, I was i have experienced this kind of uh, uh situations when i was young because then we had no pipe bomb water at all so this is the only water that we rely on in lolonia and we drink them we make sure the water settles down all the dead settles down and we fetch or, or the ones that are clean on the top. So what you do is you try to let the dirt go to the bottom and then you just drink from the top. That is but it. it still has been mixed with something. I mean, it still at some point was all just one big mixture of mess. 
But yeah. desperation dominates, doesn't it? That is it. Yeah, so these water tanks are amazing. And I started thinking, my husband makes an amazing juice. Um, that's a blend of sugar cane and ginger and lime with other fruits. Pineapple, orange, um, watermelon. But I st- being here, I said, wow. You know, water, just like he said, is life. It's so important and necessary. And it is a respected business. This is business. One promise I made to my son if I was going to live in Africa was that I had to have a way to take care of myself. And I had to explain to him how I was going to take care of myself without depending on a man and without calling back home to the U.S. for financial support. And so it is with, you know, quite quite joy that um, I share with you that I'm extending myself to extending Wonderland juice to Wonderland water to also include that umbrella because it will not only help the community, that individual person who is partnering with me, um, where you know, meaning where the tank sets, they uh, will make an income. And what I'm requiring is the least of it. I just want 10% off of whatever's made and the rest can go to the community for um, basically to, to keep things um, less arduous, to take the, some of the difficulties, the ruggedness, the roughness out of fetching water, collecting water. Because I see them carried a long way, even little kids. Um, what else do you want to say about this business as we wrap up? Well, um, to be honest with you, water in every part of Ghana is very, is somehow expensive. Yeah. Even places that are, uh, that unemployment is low, unemployment is high to say, even water is it's not considered as or like or uh, some places like a food staff water is expensive even at places that are uh, uh, there are no jobs you know so i think you uh, wonderland going into this water business is a it's a very good uh, uh venture yeah because when you have faithful people and good people to uh, 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 to partner with you're going to make your money you don't have to go through a whole lot of things like registration like other uh, products that we have because Wonderland Juice has to go through the registration and also and it is a registered company we have our temporary license but we are registered so, yeah. yeah but with the water Wonderlands can uh, uh, go through the registration with the with the, the fruit juices and other things but with the water the Wonderlands you know has the right to sell it or sell the water without registration you know? And I try to make everything um, community friendly. So, listen, I'm not trying to be a billionaire, millionaire. I don't even believe in any of that stuff. I couldn't count the numbers if I wanted to. And if you die, you can't take it with you. I want to, to be comfortable. I want the people around me to be comfortable so we can function as community and be healthy and thrive and, and exist um, in peace together. So that's why what I'm charging is just 10% of whatever is the, you know, is the um, proceeds. So, but people should consider it as a business. Why do you think other people should consider going into the water business in Ghana? I would like others to consider um, going into water business in Ghana because, as I said earlier, water is life and everybody needs water. You know, there so it's just win, 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 win. It's, it's, it's like when you go into this business, it's like it's a win win situation. You know, but with Wonderlands, your 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 concept of helping the community, yes. not because necessarily you want to make profit, but the concept of helping the, helping the community is, is a very good uh, uh, thing to do. But I also, and part of the reason I'm charging too, is I don't want to feed poverty mindset, mm-hmm. and I don't want to feed this concept of the help helpless African. Mm-hmm. The people that I've seen selling water are tremendous entrepreneurs they often stand on their feet they run alongside cars on the expressway they are in some of the toughest situations they're up early they they come to bed late um again children walk far like you know this is this is hard work and so i want to respect them as as individuals that really you know are, are, are great entrepreneurs but I also need to feed myself. I need to be able to take care of myself. Very good. And um, so it, it, that's the part to me that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. That it's, it's recipl- yeah. reciprocated love. I, I care about them. And in caring about them, I'm able to care for my own self. That is good. You know. Let's talk about some of the prices of the tanks. So I got the 5,000 um, liter. 
and um, that essentially um, costs about five hundred U.S. dollars. Yeah. But you know, you don't have to get as big of a tank as I I got. Um, there is a four thousand liter, and how much does that cost? The Isaac? four thousand liter costs um three hundred and three hundred and forty U.S. dollars. Three hundred and forty U.S. dollars to get you a four thousand liter, liter, which you see is mm. a, a little bit smaller than what I purchased. Yeah. What What's the next size? The next size is three thousand uh, three thousand liter, and tank. that that is two hundred and forty one U.S. dollars. Two hundred and forty one U.S. dollars. So that's lower than a car note. That, yeah. Now we're getting off into our cell phone prices, mm -hmm. especially if we have more than one one line. So that's reasonable. What else? Uh, the last one is the 2,000 liter tank, which costs $170. 2,000 liter, $170. That's extremely reasonable. In fact, that usually is. That's about where my phone bill falls every month. But you buy the tank once. And again, this is not a business that you get into. At least I'm a small player. So, you know, I can only afford to buy one or two tanks. But you can see if you have multiple tanks, or the larger the tank, the more water being sold, how that the money could add up. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something for people who have a heart for community, who want to lift the burden off women and children. Because um, those are primarily the people that, that oftentimes you see have the biggest struggle toting water. Men fetch water too. Everybody in, in Africa fetch water. But um, who, who, that, who you tend more often to see with that job are women. And if you respect the woman entrepreneur, if you, you respect the plight of children, this is a really, really good industry to get into. It's a simple industry to get into because what do you need, Isaac, to start? A faithful person and what? A faithful person. Uh, you need your water tank. And a tank. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, um, and basically, um, as long as I have a relationship with this continent and these villages, I'm willing to work as the partnering person um, to to sort of make sure everything flushes itself out. Uh, but I had to share this with you because I'm so excited about this venture. I have many people ask me because uh, I'm always boots on the ground. They see me here. They see me amongst the people so they know that this isn't some uh, infomercial. I'm not playing. It's no, it's no shenanigans in what I do. Um, they always ask me, you know, I'd like to help. How can I invest? I want you to help, I want you to invest, but I also want you to benefit. I want you to build a real partnership, real business deals with Africans, with those that respect humanity, not things that exploit them, not things that, that um, are, are extra punitive, where, you, where you, you know, you're charging so much or you're doing so much that they can't breathe, mm -hmm. but that where we both end up feeling good about the partnership and winning. Anyway, this is Beyond the Surface Radio. Thank you, Isaac. Isaac initially didn't even want to do the interview. He's kind of shy. Um, but I said, this is an important interview, and he, he manned up, and he, he did it. And I thank you, Isaac, for being on Beyond the Surface Radio. This is your host, Dr. Wanda J. Evans Brewer, and until we meet again, be safe in God's grace.